So I think I'm ready to make an honest and serious attempt at healing my son using Dr. Joe's meditation techniques. And specifically for the next 30 days, I'm gonna do one of his meditations every single day, sometimes multiple times a day, with the intention of healing my son and specifically with the intention of seeing him speak his first word. So my son Aiden was born with a genetic disorder known as Fragile X, and this has caused very severe intellectual disabilities as well as autism and led to all sorts of troubling behavioral issues, you know, such as self-harming. He'll sit there and just start chewing and biting down on his hand, He'll start smacking himself sometimes if he gets overwhelmed or he gets frustrated. Um, he has obsessive behaviors, you know, he'll watch the same part of a cartoon over and over and over and over again on his tablet for half an hour if we if we let him he gets sensory overload right or oh, too much stimulation um or we'll see him kind of cupping his hands and he'll start humming and self-stimulating that's what that's, that's known as um transitioning him in and out of vehicles is incredibly difficult he'll throw these huge temper tantrums just trying to get him dressed in the morning get him in the car and then get him out of the car and get him to school and get him back home um, often throw these big bad tenter tantrums, a very limited diet as well. We, getting him to try any new food is just incredibly um, challenging. He's also not potty trained. He's almost seven and he's still in diapers and we still are changing three to four diapers a day, which is, you know, very stressful and uh, very challenging. And the, the biggest thing that has me concerned is he's still not speaking. He's almost seven. He's still never spoken a single word. Um, and you know, a person, if there's like a window of opportunity for them to learn language as a child, and if somebody doesn't learn language as a child, it is incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to teach them a new language when they're an adult. And I just feel this pressure, like this window of opportunity is just shrinking on me every single day to teach him how to speak and use language and use words. And people with his disability, there are many of them that go their entire lives and they never learn how to speak, but there are a lot that do learn how to speak. Learn how to speak a few words, maybe even string a few words together in somewhat of a sentence, not in complete sentences like, like this, but they can string a few words together. Um, and this is really gonna be my big focus over the next 30 days. You know, I, of course, I, I, wanna, I wanna see, I love to see improvements in all these things. But speech is what my, my biggest concern is right now. And this is a bit of an experiment as well to see what happens if I put my God honest effort at one specific goal like this, if I can manifest something, if I can heal him of his some of these ailments. And I, I have no delusions that my son is going to turn into you know a neurotypical child all of a sudden. But if I can see some improvements in some of these symptoms that he has and these conditions that he has, specifically language, like that's really what I'm shooting for. And language, you know, if I got to the end of this and I said, yeah, I think his mood improved or less tenter, temp temper tantrums, it's a little harder to quantify that. You know, I may have some sort of unconscious bias when I'm evaluating him, wanting this stuff to, to work. Language is quantifiable. It's binary. It's over the next 30 days, he either speaks his first word or he doesn't, you know? It, this is an experiment and um, I'm really gonna put all my effort in trying to help him using these techniques from Dr. Joe. Now, a few few disclaimers to this. So if one, you know, it, Dr. Joe's never said like, hey, you know, you, you can remotely heal your child by doing this specific meditation, right? It, there, there is no exact formula for me to doing this. I'm just kind of figuring it out on my own. But he does talk about how, you know, he teaches that we live in a multiverse and we're traveling forward in time and in front of us is infinite possibilities. And by holding that thought in your mind and feeling the emotion, you're creating an electromagnetic field that is drawing that future to you, you know? And that's the approach that I'm gonna be trying to take for the next 30 days, drawing this future to me where my son speaks his first word. Um, and, you know, somebody may, let's say he does speak his first word, you know, somebody could come back and say, you know, well, you were probably working with them more on, on language. And, and, you know, that'd be a fair argument. So 
One thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be limiting how much I, I work with them on trying to speak, right? Uh, I'm gonna limit to, to about one minute a day that I have him. I'm gonna do some tests and try to get him to say, say his first word. I really want this to be a test to see how well this stuff works. And I also wanna point out that I only have 50% custody of him. So only over the next 30 days, I'm only gonna have him for maybe 15 days. And during those 15 days, one minute a day, I'm gonna be trying to see if I, if he's learned any new language. And this is really gonna, really an experiment. You know, I, I don't know if it's gonna work. I, I, I hope it will, you know, um, I really hope it will. You, you know, Dr. Joe talks about how you have to feel the emotion of that future that you want. Uh, and I, I can't think of a stronger emotion, you know, than seeing my son speak his first word. So I'm hoping that will kind of help help out, give me some sort of advantage in this this little experiment that I'm running. All right, so here we are, day one, meditation one. I'm doing tuning in to new potentials. This is one of my favorite meditations. It has you going really deep into this deep meditation being aware of the space all around you. And then it has you focus on what is the future that you want. You hold that image in your mind and then you feel the emotion of that image. And that's supposed to create this electromagnetic uh, field that draws that future to me. So this is definitely one of my favorite meditations. And I'm gonna be doing this meditation for the next 30 days and really focusing on envisioning my son speaking his first word. Um, now, a lot of people say I shouldn't be meditating in my bed. I, I'm gonna be honest, I never had any problem with that. I don't fall asleep when, I, when I'm doing that. Um, I like kind of meditating in my bed, honestly. And I, I usually just throw a, you know, a t-shirt or something over my eyes to try to help me out. And I'll kind of show you guys what my meditation process looks like. So I usually just pull the, uh, the, the meditation up on my phone. So, okay, let's, let's get to it. Meditation one, day one of 30 day challenge. Oh man, that got intense. <sighs> yeah, so like you go deep, deep into it. Um, and then he just has you envisioning, or as envisioning seeing my son um, speak, you know, and saying for the first time and saying Baba and Dada and more and saying, you know, Dada, I love you. Oh my god, that got intense. I was fucking, I was crying during that. I was like really like uncontrollable. And then he had this point where, you know, I, I had this envision of feeling the emotions. And, you know, there's a point where he says you have to, you have to let that go and give it up. And I, I couldn't, I didn't want to. I didn't want to give up that, that vision during that. Yeah, man, that got intense. Jesus. Um, you, you know, like, you know, the one one thing I may have to my advantage is in this is the the, the emotions. That is that is a powerful powerful emotion. You know, envisioning my son speaking. I got I got the shivers. I was shaken during that. Yeah, that's 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 intense, man. That that got real intense. Which is a good thing. I think that's what you need, right? He says you need powerful emotions in order to draw that that to you. Um, but okay, day one's in the bag, right? Thirty more days. Um, I'm gonna try to do, if I can, I'm gonna try to do these multiple times a day. You know, life it, it gets hard doing that. I'm, I'm at least gonna do it at least once a day. But I'm gonna try doing it multiple times a day if I can. So day one's in the bag. Can you say dada? Come here, come here. Can you say dada? Come on, can you say it? Dada. Dada. Can you say dada? Uh-uh. Can you say... Can you say dada? Come on, come on, come on. Hey. Dada. 
Dada. Can you say it, buddy? Dada. Can you say Dada? Hey, can you say Dada? Dada. Aiden? Dada. Come here, can you say Dada? Can you say Dada? Dada. So we're on day two now. I've actually done the meditation twice today already. The uh, the tuning into new potentials. I did it first thing in the morning and then sometime in the afternoon. Um, I gotta say, it's pretty emotionally draining that meditation and just kind of envisioning my son like that. Um, but I, I think I'm getting more. I'm better at it. I'm getting more efficient. You know, when he says stuff like, you know, be aware of the space in the back of your head and be aware of the space around your head like i'm getting more efficient i guess at, at sensing that space around my head or around my neck um and you know sensing the, the space within my chest cavity um and i i can actually i'm, I'm getting better at not getting getting teary eyed uh at envisioning my son like that i think and i'm, I'm it's it's actually clearer and easier for me to envision him speaking now that's something that i noticed the first time it was really hard for me to envision him and hear his voice um but i i can envision him much more clearly now which i, I think will will help out um i am pretty emotionally drained today but i've got some free time i wanted to do a third meditation today i think i'm gonna skip tuning into new potentials i'm gonna try a different meditation I'm actually gonna try one from his progressive course. So this is going to be uh, the body to a new mind meditation. I think this is actually supposed to be like an intensive breathing exercise. So I'm gonna give this one a try. So that'd be my third meditation uh, for today. You know, th these days that I don't have my son, you know, um, I work from home, so I, I am a little bit more flexible in my hours and I really kind of wanna dive deep into these things while I have this free time. Because it is a lot harder to find time to do these things when I when I do have my son. So I'm gonna jump into uh, into this one and we're gonna see how it is. So I thought I could use some help on this journey. So I reached out to Jessica Fenton, who is a manifestation coach. She actually gave me some pretty helpful tips on how to actually go about manifesting changes in my life. But so my, my son has a genetic disorder known as Fraunderlax, and he's very severe intellectual disabilities and autism. He's almost seven now, and he still hasn't spoken. If I wanted to kind of set my expectations and what I could manifest, I mean, could I manifest that this genetic disorder completely goes away and he grows up to be a normal functioning adult? Or should I set my expectations more at, maybe I can help some of the symptoms around his autism and around his dis disabilities and uh, maybe I could help him speak and verbalize. Like where, where should I set my expectations? Like, are there really no limits or are there some limits, especially if if I'm not trying to manifest something in my life, I'm trying to manifest something in somebody else's life. Hmm. How I see it is that there's an answer for everything in the universe. And so what you're looking for when you're helping somebody else is you're looking for the answer as to why that is happening or who can help. Um, so it's not that from, from my perspective, it's not that you're manifesting the health within them. It's opening up that that subconscious to um who can who's got the answer who can help with this because there is uh, there is an answer to it um and in that that that's got a sense of um looking at formulating a way of thinking about it that is going to bring in the specific people that can help with that or the answers that you might just be looking on the internet and something just clicks you like that's it this is um this is what i'm you know dealing with and so that's how how i'd really approach it is to the answer is there and you're manifesting the answer um, to the question. So we're on day four now, and so far I've done six of these meditations. 
and they've gotten pretty intense. I've had some very intense emotional meditations where I, I'm like, I feel like I'm, I'm shaking my body. Um, so a lot of emotion, and I today just got my son back from my ex-wife uh, back on one of my days. So today's going to be one of the first days I'm actually going to now do some tests and see if I can get him to speak anything. Specifically, I'm going to be working on the word more. So with him, uh, when we do something that he really likes, like he really likes when I read him one of his stories, we've taught him to clap his hands for more. And so it indicates that he wants more. And I think that's going to be a really, that's maybe one of the easiest words to teach him because we can do stuff like reading his books and tickling and playing with them that he really loves. So more is going to be the word that I'm going to be focusing on. And this is going to be kind of my first test so far to see if he's made any progress in learning how to use his words and learning some speech. Let's get to Rocket. He'll help us with our mission to find Henry, the poor lost puppy. Rocket shows us where to find Henry. He's on a grassy field in France. We'll need to sing this song. Help us sing. Lost puppy, we want to take you home. We want to take you home. Please let us take you home. Come ride with us in Rocket and then we'll take you home. Help us on a mission. Get Henry home. Come here, Eddie. Come here. Do you want more? Come here. Come here. Ma, more. Can you say ma, more, more, ma, 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 ma. Hey, 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 come here. Ma, ma. Did you say hmm? More, more. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the meditation that I'm doing, tuning in to new potentials. So this is actually such an important meditation to his work. He's got an entire chapter dedicated to this, tuning into new potentials in the quantum in his book, Becoming Supernatural. This entire chapter is dedicated to explaining this one single meditation. And the meditation is really focused on how to manifest changes in your life. And how he explains it, it's a pretty simple formula. So it's simple, not necessarily easy. So one of the first steps in this meditation is that you have to become nobody, nowhere, no time, and no space. And he actually has a moment in the meditation where he stops speaking and allows you to kind of sink into what he calls the quantum. And if you watch my video, uh, I touched the unified field and changed my life forever. This is what I'm talking about. This is kind of the moment in this meditation where you can kind of sink into this and have a completely out of body experience where you are aware of nothing but your awareness. So let me just read a quick uh, passage from this section. So it says here that the only way you can exist in the quantum is as an awareness, or better said, the only way you can experience this realm is with your awareness, not your senses. And later on, on page 62, he says that the quantum field is the state in which all possibilities exist. All possibilities exist. So you've often heard him say things like anything is possible. Literally anything is possible. All possibilities exist. You know, this is what he's talking about right here. And this is why it kind of gives me hope that I may be able to change something with my son. If all possibilities exist, if there is an infinite number of universes and I just need to tune in to the one that has, you know, what I'm desiring and I can kind of draw it to me supposedly, right? That's the idea of this meditation. And he goes on in this chapter to talk about how when you're into this state of being nobody, nowhere, no time, no space, which is a tricky state to enter. And I actually don't always fully achieve that when I try doing this meditation. Sometimes I get close, but I come up just a little bit short. Um, I do find that the more consistent I'm doing the meditation, the deeper and deeper and deeper I go into becoming nobody, nowhere, no time, no space. If I take, let's say a break, a week off, and then I try to do it, like I'm not even close to getting to it. I have to be kind of consistent day after day, and then I can really enter that state. It says once you enter that state, you just have to have a clear image, clear intention in your mind. So for me, it's seeing my son speaking for the first time. And he says that that's putting out an electrical signal into the quantum field. And then you have to feel the emotion of what that's gonna feel like. And that's supposed to create a magnetic signal that's drawing the future to you. And combining the two, it creates an electromagnetic signal that supposedly is supposed to be drawing this multiverse, this other reality to you and start manifesting in your life. Right, so that's kind of a brief summary of this tuning into new potentials meditation that I'm practicing.
you doing in here? <clears throat> Do you want more? Can you say M more? M more. Hey, I just folded those. Can you say M more? M. Come on, buddy, you gotta say it. M more. Come here, you. You want more? <clears throat> you do. You do. What are you doing? <laughs> Get up here. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta say it! I wanna hear you say it! Use your voice! <laughs> So 30 days has come and gone and well over 30 sessions of tuning into new potentials with the focus of trying to manifest my son speaking his first word, whether it's Dada or Baba or more, or really any kind of sound that's kind of associated with, with something I would have sounded for. And I hate to report it, but I, I haven't seen it. I haven't, he's really no closer to speaking now than he was, you know, at the start of this whole journey which is, is pretty frustrating. Um, and you know, during these meditations, you actually have an opportunity to try to manifest two different things. The other one I thought was gonna be just a little bit easier, right? I thought maybe this is a little bit harder, I'll do a little easier one. The other one was, you know, I have a friend that I haven't spoken to about a year from now, and I just wanted them to just reach out to me, right? Whether it's a text message or comment on a YouTube video or an email or a Facebook message, something like that, for just for them to somehow reach out to me, just to kind of as a test of all this, and I couldn't even manifest that. Um, pretty, pretty frustrating, pretty disappointing. Uh, now, I, I do want to say that, you know, nowhere has Dr. Joe ever said, if I do this meditation for 30 days, I'm going to manifest changes. He's never, ever said that. Uh, Jessica Fenton's never said anything like that either. This is me just kind of piecing things together from what I can glean from books and the, you know, online classes and, um, interviews and everything, just trying to figure this stuff out for myself and just kind of do an experiment and do a test. You know, it, I'm self-employed and so, uh, a lesson that I learned in business a long time ago was the difference between a winner and a loser. And this may sound harsh, but hear me out. A loser tries something and they fail and they give up. A winner tries something and they fail and they try again. And they fail and they try again and they fail and they try again until finally they win. That's, that's really the difference between winners and losers. When you look at life from that perspective, you want to fail fast and you want to fail hard. You want to get those failures out of the way. And so for me, that's really what this was, right? I, I kind of had some piece together like, okay, okay. They're saying this is how you manifest. Let's put it to the test. Let's try it out. Let's go as hard as I can for 30 days. See if, uh, you know, I can actually pull anything together out of this. And, you know, I wasn't really sure what to do with this, this video. And I actually sat on this for a little while trying to figure out, you know, should I, should I do another 30 days? Should I try a different meditation? What should I do? And last week I went out to the um, San Diego Advanced Week-Long Meditation Retreat. And I'm actually really glad that I did. That was a huge, huge eye-opener. And I think I learned a little bit more about why this hasn't quite worked for me. 
Um, you know, Dr. Joe talked a lot about how if you're operating in these lower frequency ranges, it's gonna take forever for you to manifest changes in your life. Like he said that. And he said that you really need to elevate yourself up to these higher frequency ranges. You need to really tune into those higher frequency ranges and be operating up there if you really wanna manifest changes in your life, right? You need to be working on your energy centers and really feeling and focusing on your energy centers. You really need to be able to become nobody, nowhere, no time and no space and really go deep into that in order for you to manifest changes. And he was talking about this. I was like, wow, that's that's so profound. Like this whole time, I've been doing this work for about a year now and I've been focusing just on, not on me, but on manifesting things in my life, manifesting money and health for my child and relationships. I've been focusing out, outwards and all these things. And like what I really took away from this is that I need to focus on me and me tuning into these higher levels first, right? And that's, completely different paradigm than I, I've been operating on. So I've been doing his work for about a year now, and this may sound crazy. Uh, I never actually believed in these energy centers that he's talked about. And I know that sounds crazy um, because I have taken all his online courses. I've read most of his books. I've watched dozens of hours of his interviews, but I was always like, yeah, that energy center stuff, I don't really get it. I don't really understand. I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy into that, but all this other stuff about, you know, your, your uh, <laughs> adrenal glands releasing cortisol and adrenaline and oxytocin and you regulating your hormones. I believe in all that stuff. The energy centers, I don't know. After going to this advanced retreat, I'm now a believer in those energy centers. I am. Um, you know, we probably did over seven days, we probably did at least 30 hours, probably over 30 hours of meditation. And a lot of those meditations are you focused on you know, kind of becoming nobody, nowhere, no time, and no space, and then just becoming aware of this energy in these different energy centers flowing to you. And I could sense it. I could sense it for the first time ever. I was never really able to kind of pick up on those and find them and tune into them until that meditation retreat. And so now, like, when I look back at this last year, me trying to manifest changes, yet I wasn't tuned into any of my energy centers. You know, he talks about it, you have to be at those higher energies, and I don't think I was. I think I've been operating. I, I didn't even believe in the energy, right? How, how can I be at the higher energies if I didn't even believe in them? Uh, and so that was just a huge like paradigm shift for me that this is really what I need to focus on. And I, I talked to somebody else um, at the retreat, at the very start of the retreat, and I was asking them, you know, what, what should I focus on to help heal my son? I just want to heal my son. That's all I care about. Should I do the tuning into new potentials? Should I do learn how to do coherent healings and focus on, on that? And they told me, no, don't do either of those things. You focus on you. You focus on doing uh, blessing of the energy centers. You work on you, you tune into those higher levels and your son will heal himself just by being in proximity to you. And this was completely separate. This was actually before Dr. Joe was kind of talking about this. And that was so profound. And then Dr. Joe kind of reiterated that same exact message um, and then, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've actually had quite a few people, you know, from Facebook groups and from this YouTube channel sending me kind of the testimonial channels or testimonial videos, videos from Dr. Joe of parents being able to heal, heal their children. Almost all of those cases, they are saying exactly what I'm saying right now. They focused on themselves, not on the child. They focus on them tuning in, feeling those energy centers, raising their energy levels and their children healed themselves just from being a proximity to them somehow, you know? And so, yeah, you know, I did this experiment and I failed. Good. I've got that lesson. I've got that experiment. I got that experience, you know, and now I'm going to keep moving forward and try again. And I'm probably going to fail again. And I'm going to keep doing it again and again and again until I finally figure this crap out. And I think, you know, right now, my focus is not really going to be on trying to focus on what I want to manifest in my life, but really just the tuning into the blessing of the energy centers. That is the ones that I'm going to be focused on. Um, I did one today, man, and man, I got I got deep into it. Uh, that One of the things I love about that retreat is since I got back from the retreat, I've gone deeper and deeper and deeper into all my meditations. I've gone so much deeper. And now that I actually believe in the energy centers, you know, now I can definitely go a lot deeper in those. And that's kind of what my goal is right now. 
you know, I'm not going to set any, any timelines on it or anything. I'm really just kind of focused on myself and trying to raise my energy levels and tune in as, as high as I can. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that is really the formula. That is the formula to help my son is focus on me first. And then once I get to a higher enough level, then I can start focusing on him. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. This, this experiment has been uh, a huge failure, which is a good thing. I learned a lot from this failure and I'm going to keep plowing forward and, you know, uh, I'm keep failing until I, I finally, finally figure it out. Thanks so much for watching. Um, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe to kind of stay tuned on where I'm at in this journey and kind of any other big profound realizations I have just like this.